Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. Talk about fast. Andy on Blue Aeons actually dumping his entire hand for the most part. We've got Ancient Tomb, Mox Opal, Lotus Petal, Lion's Eye Diamond, and a Bauble all coming down. Uh, and on the other side of the table, don't even have the name up that that's going to be Billy on Eldrazi landing a Thorn of Amethyst. Wasteland is going to be coming down the pipe to curtail some of Andy's mana, perhaps. Uh, but actually, Karn, wow, bombs are being dropped here. You would think Thorn of Amethyst would potentially prevent a four casting cost non-creature spell from being cast on turn two. Uh, but Andy actually has four additional mana, if necessary. And he upgrades his Lotus Petal to a Lion's Eye Diamond. And if Billy doesn't stick a creature here, he is going to get slapped with a Mycosynth Lattice. Let's see what he can do. He does have an Eldrazi Mimic and a Matter Reshaper and an Endless One. So, slight change in plans. Maybe Ensnaring Bridge off of Karn. A Bobble. And there's the ensnaring bridge. Paying the one with the Mox Opal. So at this point, shields in place. Billy gonna have a tough time dealing with ensnaring bridge. Particularly game one. At this point. Andy likely to just be looking for Mycosynth Lattice. Don't need to get too fancy here. Just get the Lattice, get it down. And continue to play the cards out of your hand. I guess there is an argument that he might be unable to pay uh, to play some of the cards out of his hand. Chalice at zero being played and killed by Karn, allowing him to ramp up. And making the same play again. An opposing Chalice, which will offer very, very little resistance, as, as we've seen, Karn can take those down no problem. Lion's Eye Diamond, very good at getting rid of cards from your hand. And it looks like Mox Opal's perhaps going to be used here to grab the Lattice. And with no cards in hand, and he just needs to stay in front of this, Billy will not be doing anything else other than potentially attacking down the line. Paying one to cast a bobble into that chalice. And now Andy removing the chalice after. So he is down a card. Solid top deck there in a land. I guess some of the only things to worry about here would be like a couple of Echo of Aeons drawn in a row could be a little bit of a pain. But... Lion's Eye Diamond, still part of the equation, can be found. And he should be totally in the clear here. It's just going to be a matter of how, how he manages. Walking Ballista now. Very sizable. And that's enough for Billy. I mean, it's... Pretty much no way that Billy can win there unless somehow Andy gets choked up on cards in his hand that are either uncastable or give him more cards. So like drawing four Echo of Aeons in a row, it's kind of a pain there. But he even has the workaround on board with Karn being able to go get a Tormod's Crypt to exile his graveyard and go then go get a Lion's Eye Diamond out of exile. And that's assuming he doesn't have an LED in the sideboard 
in a post board configuration. He may he, he may actually have one in there all the time, or that may be something that post board you shave on an LED in some matchups. This is not Bomberman. Um, I mean, I probably wouldn't, but I think people with experience would probably at least test to see how often you want to have cards that are part of a somewhat fragile combo in specifically in a Drazi matchup. You're on the draw, potentially facing down Chalice and Thorn. Lion's Eye Diamond does become significantly worse. But still, it, the burden of proof is definitely on the testing there. If, if, if you find that you do need to just play more more solid cards that are likely to come together. I mean, that, that is why you actually test. You can't do it all in theory crafting. And when I played Bomberman in Vintage, uh, it was very much the consensus that it was terrible versus workshops. And there were some things that you could do. Urkel's Recall was probably the best of them. You just need the shields to be down for just one turn. And just go infinite. Uh, now we've got Chalice and Thorn of Amethyst, both of which are absolutely devastating versus most combo decks, but will Andy be able to play around it? Eldrazi Mimic. Swinging in for two. First sign of being slightly suboptimal. And now a Force of Will to stop this Null Rod. Eldrazi Mimic reasonably costed, but what you're really looking for is some synergy with Reality Smasher or Endless One in this case is a decent second place. Going to swing in for what looks like five damage. Reality Smasher, of course, having haste is just devastating with Eldrazi Mimic. Potentially hitting your opponent for like 10 life out of nowhere. An extra 8 damage. And then you've still got a 5-5 on board that's very difficult to deal with. So this is a little bit slower. But we'll still get there if Andy doesn't find something to do. So far it does look like Chalice and Thorn are doing their job. And Echoing Truth taking out Chalice. Lion's Eye Diamond, double Lion's Eye Diamond, both being sacrificed, and it looks like we're going to be spinning the wheel. All right, so Echo of Aeons should be two mana still floating. There was six. Four for the, well, three for Echo plus one for Thorn. So a couple of mana floating. And a full new hand. City of Traitors. Into Urza. That's a non creature spell. And a one casting cost walking ballista. I didn't catch that. I feel like that was a mana shy. Maybe I missed something. Reality Smasher coming in. And Walking Ballista pinging the Eldrazi Mimic in response before it gets huge. Urza chump blocking to survive. And now another Eldrazi Mimic coming down. Some nice double sigs on these cards for Billy. The gold and black looks great on that Eldrazi Mimic. And Lion's Eye Diamond. Another Lion's Eye Diamond. Hull Breacher. Wow, fighting tooth and nail here. Hull Breacher with double Lion's Eye Diamond into another Echo. This time it's going to get seven treasures for Andy which is a hell of a way to, to break the oppressive presence of this Thorn of Amethyst. Needing to pay that extra one is a real hindrance, but it's not too bad when you've got seven extra treasures lying around. Got a Psy, Master Thopterist, a Mox Opal. That's going to create a 1-1. One, one. 
another Mox Opal. Can Andy get enough out in front to prevent this Reality Smashers trample from being an issue? Walking Ballista looks like at three there. And I, yeah, look at that. That is not instant death on the other side of the table. We'll see what Billy can do. Another Reality Smasher would be pretty devastating. He does have Eye of Ugin, which can potentially help in tutoring that up. Chalice. Urborg being tapped for black. I'm sorry. I have Ugin being tapped for black thanks to Urborg. And now everything turns sideways as you would expect. Boy, I would have loved to have the life totals on camera for this one. We know Andy's very close to death as he did chump block last turn. So figuring out the trample situation. There can be some chump blocking on So the end result is going to be everything dying except for Psy and the endless one. Narset coming down. Billy very, very much shut off from card drawing now. Lion's Eye Diamond, which is a 1-1 one, one body. Now the synergy with uh, Narset and Hull Breacher is actually pretty brutal. It doesn't shut down your opponent from drawing cards um, in a way that prevents you from getting the treasures because they always attempt to draw that one card. Narset would prevent them from drawing a, an additional card. It was a fairly long break for me in real time. And it looks like Endless One coming down as absolutely gigantic, but luckily can be chump blocked by 1-1s one -ones if Andy can get some additional card drawing going. He's got an Echo of Aeons. That does cost 6 mana, Thorn making it cost 7. Will be pretty sweet with Narset if Narset can stick around. And a Hull Breacher going in for double blocks, or blocking twice, I should say. Only one replacement effect doable. And using a treasure to power out this Echo of Aeons. It's a lot of treasure. It's pretty wild. It is pretty wild interaction. That feels like a vintage power level play. I mean, a time twister already is a vintage power level play. Denying your opponent their side of it and getting seven lotus petals out of it? That is, that is pretty busted. Now we have a walking ballista. Coming down just as a 1-1, one, one, looking like it's going to intend to block. Because the only thing that would make this feel more vintage power level would be if Andy was resolving some time walk effects. And let's see what he's able to do with this. It's a huge advantage, but on the other side of the board, there's some bodies. Looking to do damage. Right, so Andy drawing his seven off of Echo. 
both Narset and Hull Breacher out. I believe there was a judge call explaining that Narset will allow a single card to potentially be drawn, and that replacement effect is taken effect with the Hull Breacher, meaning that a card has not been drawn, meaning that another card could potentially be drawn, and so on, allowing for it just working out in the best possible way for the blue Aeon player. Reality Smasher. Well, that guy has Trample. So blocks being made there. And actually not getting there. Wow. That is pretty crazy. And we are seeing some sideboard cards coming out. Null Rod, Ulamog, some, some spicy cards there on Billy's side of the table. And, you know, I guess I lost track of this one. I didn't think Billy won a game. I'm going to assume that that was three games and Billy got him. I apologize uh, if I somehow missed that. Um, but that seems like the logical conclusion here, as I'm not seeing them moving on to the next game. And we got a Baby Yoda, or Grogu, as it were. All right, well, that was a tough one. That was probably five hours in between the beginning of that match. We had a good little run here in the store. So that is all for this one. But don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Ball Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.